Hi, Kirk here with BMW Motor Rod Club of Northern Illinois. And in this video, I want to show you guys some of the tools that I use in my shop. I've been getting a lot of uh, requests lately for this, getting a lot of uh, questions uh, via the email and uh, you know YouTube comments, things like that, uh, about you know what kind of tools do I recommend, what kind of tools should I buy, that kind of thing. I don't know that I have too many recommendations of exactly what you should buy. But I'm going to show you what I use in my shop uh, on a lot of the jobs. Of course this isn't going to be all the tools I have. I mean there's my my toolbox back there. It's it's pretty much full uh, but these are the typical ones that I like to go through. But you see in a lot of my videos. I'll start off with the, the Milwaukee M12 here. I, I really love this uh, this little drill driver here. It's uh, one the one that fits the bits. It doesn't have a uh, you know a chuck on there. Um, really works awesome for taking off all the panels. Everybody knows that how much of a pain in the ass it is to take off all the panels on this bike, all the Tupperware. You gotta have one of those. Get the flashlight to go along with it, then you can utilize both batteries. The batteries do charge up pretty quick on this thing if you do get an M12. Um, you know, everybody makes one of these. Hitachi, Bosch, Makita, you name it, they all make one. Uh, an excellent little device to have. Even the, the cheap ones probably from Harbor Freight wouldn't be all that bad uh, for this job because there's not a lot of torque involved in taking off the uh, the screws. The setting that I typically go with on, on this drill if you do have one or one similar is I usually go with a number six on all the panel screws. Uh, sometimes I'll go with a seven if it's if I think there's a chance it might come out but I really don't go much further than that. Inside your manual in those books you'll find a crossover to uh, foot-pounds or inch-pounds. Go with the, whatever your setting is. Okay, next thing up is go with some some of my uh, electrical tools here. Of course, you've got, you got to have a, a decent pair of wire strippers. You do a lot of electrical stuff on these bikes, so you got to have something that's going to work for electrical. So th this is a uh, blue point pair. Got it off the Snap-on truck. It's a little off-brand of Snap-on. And then I have kind of a, a cheap set of wire strippers. Um, they, all I can say is they work. But I use them a lot. Going along still with the electrical thing. I've got a uh, multimeter. They come in many different shapes and sizes. Hopefully you have one in your toolbox. You know how useful they are. You should have a soldering gun. You're going to need one of these. These, the wiring on all these bikes is getting older by the day and uh, as such you're probably going to have to uh, farkalize your bike or you're going to have to do some kind of electrical repairs uh, get that along with some good quality uh, solder that goes with it the electrical solder and the flux and all that kind of stuff hopefully you know how to solder uh, if you don't hopefully you're going to you, you learn how to solder this bike will teach you how to solder So. Can't uh, see too much more here, electrical wise, other than battery. Should have a battery charger of some form. Uh, if your bike didn't come with one, go get one. Whether you get the battery tender brand or I picked this one up. Uh, this is a Motocentric MC750. I think I got it from Motorcycle Superstore uh, when it was on sale. It was really, really cheap. Um, anyways, I got one of these. I've got a battery tender one. I've also got a real big. Uh, battery charger too that you know like 50 60 amps I don't use that one too often on a bike because it'll it'll burn things up but anyways I've got it and that's what matters a battery tester I use this a lot for uh, when, whenever people bring bikes in here and they're having charging issues or whatever just to test their battery and make sure it's actually still putting out the correct, correct amount of uh, cold cranking amps nice thing to have and they're not, they're not a whole lot of money. So going on to uh, some of the other things here. Oil changes. should have a cap type filter wrench. I guess this is a cap wrench. Anyway, this is a, a decent quality one. This one's uh, made by 
has it. It's a 2169. Hopefully that's going to zoom in okay on there. Honey has it 2169. And this one has the, 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 the biggest thing is to make sure it has the correct amount of lands inside of here or these little ridges, these little notches that are inside there so that they fit the filter correctly. Uh, th this particular one works perfect on the K bike uh, for the BMW filter, the ones you actually buy from BMW. Uh, the Bosch 3330, which you can get at most uh, auto parts stores. Or this uh, number right here of Bosch, which is the 3330, but for a uh, bulk type, you can get these at Beamer Boneyard uh, and save a few bucks. They comes out a lot cheaper to buy them in bulk, as as most things. While you're at Beamer Boneyard, pick up one of these if you have the bike that has the ABS unit where this will fit into. Uh, on my particular bike, on my 2000, I don't use this filter, but on everything beyond uh, like a 2001, I use this because it need it. you got to have uh, something. If it's got the servo motors in it, that's the way to go. And still there. You're still on Beaver Boneyard. Pick up one of these. Uh, don't necessarily have to get this Beamer Boneyard. You can actually probably find these at Walgreens or uh, any place that they sell hair color products. It, it's actually a color applicator, but it has uh, the little graduations on here, milliliter graduations, and it's nice and small so you can get it up inside and put in uh, the right amount of gear lube in the final drive. Nice thing to have. And cheap too. It's only a couple of bucks, I think. Couple other things here. Got uh, copper anti seize. You should have copper anti seize if you're using the uh, silver stuff. I mean, it'll work, but this is this is definitely better. And uh, some component cooler to get off the bolts and stuff that are stuck. I I showed how to use this stuff in the video where I show how to uh, change out the disc brake in the rear. First, your typical tools. This is one of my favorites right here. This is the uh, a Craftsman wrench, or Craftsman ratchet, I should say. Craftsman ratchet. Uh, I really like this particular ratchet. This one is really nice because it's it's got some nice heft to it. It's nice and fat right through here where you grip it, and it doesn't bite into your hands. It's big enough. Oh, excuse me. It's big enough and fat enough that it's uh, you know, it doesn't bite when you really crank on it. Another thing I like too is it has a lot of teeth up inside the head so that it's got a real short throw to it so you can get it into tight places and wiggle it back and forth and still get somewhere. And, and that's, that's in opposition to the, the other type of Craftsman which is the uh, one that you get with all the pretty much all the socket sets and stuff. It's their cheapo. I mean it's still a good wrench I suppose but this one is more like a club. You know you could probably use it to hammer things. It's better to hammer than it is to uh, ratchet it with. You should have a breaker bar. If you don't, you should have one. Helps to uh, get the lug nuts off in the rear, especially if you don't have impact stuff or you can't get your impact gun in there. You should definitely have a set of hex head and uh, Torx sockets. These help a lot to get into various things, uh, getting pretty much all the screws off. Or all the bolts off on the bike. Definitely invest in a set of those. And while you're at it, pick up a set of the longer ones and, and make them in metric. It's all metric stuff. These are in metric. Uh, I think I picked these up at Harbor Freight, but they work great. You know, they they're fantastic. Uh, same with these. Thirty millimeter, half inch. Uh, socket here so that you can get off the uh, the bolts that hold on the swing arm and also the one that's on the back side of the final drive the uh, lock nut that's on there uh, you'll have to cut a big hole in it I, I totally massacred this one but you know it still works so it doesn't matter if it's ugly as long as it works I mean I'm ugly look at me I, I still work 
some crow foot wrenches. You should have a set of these, especially if you do that sh the, the front shock. Uh, it really helps to have a crow foot wrench to put down on on the top of that shock, so you can get that one uh, t torqued up to the correct spec. Some uh, feeler gauges, especially metric. If you can find metric feeler gauges out there, definitely pick up a set of met metric feeler gauges. Uh, you can get the the specific ones off of Beamer Boneyard. They have those, uh, you know, just the individual ones to check the intake and exhaust. Uh, I I think I found this at a garage sale for like two bucks, and it's a metric set. Very happy about that. Torque wrenches. You should have a torque wrench. You gotta have a torque wrench to do this bike. Everything, everything on the bike has a torque setting. Don't even attempt to do stuff without a torque wrench. And just make sure it's one. I don't, I'm not gonna be real brand specific here, but just make sure it's accurate. You know, have it calibrate it or calibrate it yourself. Uh, find out, you know, there's other videos online here on how to calibrate these things. Um, I've calibrated this one several times. This is an old master mechanic one. I think it was produced in like 1998 or something. Uh, I actually don't like this tool. I, I want to replace it. Not because it's not accurate, because it is. It's a clicker type. But it's just really hard to see these, these graduations that are on here. These, you know, to, to do the settings on here, they're really tough to see. You know, you got to shine it just right in the light. And, uh, and then you, there's... Can't, I probably can't even make it out on the video, but there's numbers around here that are all worn off now that uh, you got to do the math. Uh, it's just a pain. This one's not the greatest, but it still works for me. It, it's working. One I, I would have a real hard time replacing is the uh, the half inch one that I use. This one here, this uh, snap on Torco meter. I had this one calibrated a few years ago uh, by Snap on and really like this tool it's you know it's not I like it because it's just so it's so reliable and so accurate it, this one does not beep it doesn't click it has a little light that comes on when this when you when you're torquing down on it the the pin will move over or the the needle will move over and then touch that pin and then throw the light on so this one goes up to uh, What's it go up to here? Like 250 foot pounds, I think. Yep, 250 foot pounds of torque. I'll never hit fit 250 on a BMW motorcycle. If I if I did, it's just gonna snap things right off. So you gotta have uh, you know some decent extensions. Really like the snap-on extensions. They have uh, really nice square edges that really hold onto the sockets nice. Uh, they're really just a very firm connection. And if I can just touch briefly back on the oil filter issue. It's got, this particular one has, you know, this nut out here. But it also, when you put the, the socket in, or you put the extension in there, What's really important too, which I forgot to mention earlier, is that it doesn't go all the way through. It doesn't pop out. Um, I'll show you the wrong type for this particular job. This is the kind that you can buy. It's, it's probably like Pittsburgh's tools or something. You can buy this at AutoZone or um, Advance Auto, any of those places. You know, it might have the right, the correct amount of lands in it, but this part here is too flat on there, and you can see how it pops out it'll push the filter right off and then you can't get anywhere so then you gotta wind up backing it off of there and messing around with it it not cool so sometimes it really does pay to have better tools to buy the better things wouldn't say it's always the case but a lot of times it's the case if you're gonna service your center stand get yourself a brake tool it helps really good with that uh, with the, the springs that are on the side of that center stand to uh, pull those off. So you put that on the pin, you rotate this around and it will pop the springs off. And then to apply them, you just you hook the springs back on here 
lay the spoon end back on that stud and then just flip it over and it'll it, it just pops the spring right on there watch that video if you uh, want to see how you uh, service out your center stand some of these this is a uh, just a brake line tool or not brake line but a gas gas line tool hex keys you should have some of these One of these comes in really handy in a lot of areas when something's stuck. This is a impact screwdriver. Uh, it comes with, uh, you can get these at Harbor Freight, they work just fine. It comes with some oversized screwdriver tips which work and you know as it, how it works is it's got a little like a little uh, twist to it so that when you hammer on the back of this this will twist just a little bit and it will pop those things loose. It's works good for when you need it. Definitely a one of those wanted to have. Now a couple of my few of my very favorite tools in the whole shop. Gotta have some needle nose players. And what I like about these particular ones, good luck finding them by the way. I think this is a defunct company. I've had these since I was about 17 years old. Uh, these have really nice sharp tips on them. You can see on there. Oh, yeah, almost get my nose. Um, really nice sharp tips, and they're really hard. Uh, I've been on the Stamp-on truck and looked around for really nice sharp tips. Anything to replace these? Not because I want to replace them, but I'm pretty hard on my tools, and I know that this these will break sometime in my lifetime, and I'm going to be very sad. I'll probably cry. The other part, the other pair of pliers that I really like are uh, cutters. Are these right here? These are uh, some M. Klein and Sons old uh, Bell system telephone wire cutters. They've got a little tiny stripper area right inside there. You probably see it on the on the camera. Well, hopefully, it's, well, anyways, just take my word for it. It's there. Uh, don't use I don't use that too often, but I do use these a lot. We're cutting uh, different things zip ties things like that you gotta have lots of zip ties get good quality zip ties too if you go and you buy those zip ties over at uh, uh, like that Harbor Freight store if, if you got a local one those are really junky they they break really easy uh, when you you know most times zip ties are only used just in the first couple inches or maybe an inch or so as soon as you wrap them over they snap they're they're just junk they're made out of uh, not strong plastic you know get some green leaves or something uh, from maybe Home Depot or Lowe's or someplace that, that has uh, some better quality ones okay wrenches you should have some combo wrenches or uh, or spanners as you Brits like to call them or people over there in the UK you want to look for some that are uh, Good quality, like nice high quality ones, uh, chrome vandium or something like that. Uh, what happens is when you when you buy the cheaper ones, or ones that are too fat out here on the end, what happens is when you get onto a hardened nut, these these ends will actually splay out, and it will help round over your the the nut, and that's not going to be good. Uh, this area here. They make them in every imaginable design, you know, 6 point, 12 point, and now uh, whatever that other one is, the 10 pointer or something like that, the one that have the little flat square ones in there. I'd like to get a set of those too, just to, for my future, that would be nice. Uh, got the uh, corresponding uh, gear wrenches, ratcheting type, they work really nice. And uh, what else? seen this quite a few times in my videos it's a speed wrench I picked this up off of eBay it's a snap-on one I paid like maybe 15 bucks for it, it was a great deal uh, uh, one of the most along with those other wrenches some of the most valuable one of the most valuable little wrenches I have for working on a BMW bike is this baby right here 
check that out that is a little quarter inch quarter uh, inch bit ratchet and this one is made by Stanley it doesn't matter who makes them frankly eastwood.com sells them um, you can buy them on Amazon you can buy them on eBay just look for the ratchet you'll probably pay about fifteen or twenty dollars for this little wrench it is worth its weight in gold it is so helpful to take off if you have the type of bike that has that grab rail on the side and uh, you know how long that bolt is if you ever try to take it out you swear maybe it's, it's probably about that long might, might even be about this long I think the bolt is about this long and when you're pulling that out it it just seems like it goes on forever and if you're trying to use just a little allen wrench to try to pull that out you're there for 20 minutes trying to get that stupid little thing out get one of these it makes that job last only about three minutes it just, just pulls it out uh, it's reversible it's got a little little turn thing on the top so you can kind of work it in by by your hand I truly recommend you buy one of these find one Okay, flexible funnel really helps. Really helps to get it, do that oil change, whether you have the covers off or not. This is the way to go. And getting down to the end here, as I can tell, this is another product that I've recently have discovered. A wonderful product that uh, is made by made by Pig. The form of funnel as you can see in the picture what it does it's a bendable funnel and it works awesome for doing the job of changing out the gear lube in the transmission on the LT when you pull away that that center piece and you got a like in my video I show you fold up a piece of cardboard and wedge it in there this really gets in there nice they, they do make these in various sizes they come in, in different price ranges. Um, this one, I, you know, I don't know how big this one is. It's probably a six by fourteen or so. Uh, they're you can find them anywhere between ten and twenty dollars. You know, they the prices range all over the place. Uh, buy them right from them. It's probably the cheapest way to buy them. And then they've got a lot of other great products on there, especially for like absorbents and different things like that. Uh, anyways, this is a nitrile coated, like real thick nitrile rubber on here, uh, coated with a, a over the top of some kind of an aluminum alloy that really withstands a lot of bending. Uh, you can bend this thing back and forth and back and forth and it's not going to break, it's not going to crack inside. Um, so anyway, you can just really jam this thing up into there and direct this thing in any way you want so it comes out the side or whatever. Uh, Pig. Nice invention. Good. Definitely worth having. Find one. Last thing on the list here is to have a very good quality air tool of some kind. Uh, whether it's the an, an air gauge itself, one that's very, very accurate, or I would really strongly recommend you, if you can afford it, to get one of these. This is a, a Long Acre Racing one. This is the one that the pit crews use, the race teams, uh, job bosses whatever and the, the, the garages they use this one uh, this is highly highly accurate I mean right down to like the half a pound accurate and this is a uh, the fill gauge this will set you back probably pretty darn close to about 80 bucks if you find them on the shelf a little bit more if you uh, buy them and have it shipped to you but worth it if you uh, really care about the, the pressures in your tires some of the last things uh, that you want to have in your shop, for sure, is uh, a, a decent floor jack, a uh, you know your typical tools, of course, you know your other like screwdrivers, things like that, uh, pry bars, and you want to have uh, some kind of a torch, or what I like to call a fire wrench, whether it's a propane torch, a map gas, or those little uh, those little butane torches, anything that you can heat the, the bolts in order to get off get the melt that Loctite that they put on there anyway that's uh looking over my tools here I don't really see anything else that I didn't cover uh, if you got any questions by all means uh, shoot me an email uh, 
you can get a, a, get a hold of me through uh, the website through the uh, Illinois BMW Riders dot com. Uh, I do check that email pretty often, and uh, you can uh, wouldn't be, sur be surprising if my phone number's on there either. Uh, anyway, so if you got any questions or you got any tool suggestions or anything like that, put them down in the comments. I'm glad to help. So thank you so much for watching.